Australian of the Year, Dr. James Mukey, is calling for a sugar tax. Let's have a look. Happy Australia Day, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode. I've got my Stein of coffee, and I celebrated today with three eye fillets for breakfast. How did you celebrate? Barbecue? Beach? Doing your chores? Mowing the lawn after the rain we've had? or just relaxing. Let us know in the comments below and how you're planning to enjoy tomorrow. Now I thought we'd have a look at this article discussing Dr. James Mukey, that he was announced as Australian of the Year 2020 and that he is calling for a sugar tax. A sugar tax. Now many people have mentioned this in the comments before. I I find it it is a punitive sin tax and there's plenty of evidence to show that it doesn't really work and it only hurts those that can least afford to pay it. And I guarantee you they would not, they would not implement it efficiently. So let's have a look here. I think this is because, well, two reasons. One, ophthalmologists probably have very little education in nutrition and he's just following the health guidelines and what he was taught. And he might be getting frustrated with all the blindness and health issues that he is seeing particularly in his practice in remote areas. But let's, let's have a look. An eye surgeon working to prevent blindness has been named the 2020 Australian of the Year. The recipient of this year's honour, Dr. James Mukey, was handed the award by Prime Minister Scott Morrison at the National Arboretum in Canberra tonight. Dr. Mukey has dedicated his career to the prevention of blindness and ophthal ophthalmic research. He founded the Sight for All in 2000, an organization dedicated to fighting all causes of blindness with projects in Aboriginal and other Australian communities as well as Asia and Africa. Dr. Mukey succeeded last year's winners of the Australian of the Year Award. Two Thai cave research rescuers, Craig Challen and Richard Harris. The researchers were jointly named as last year's winners for their heroic effort to save 12 Thai boys who were stuck in an underground cave with their soccer coach. With programs in Australia, Ethiopia and nine countries across Asia, Sight for All not only restores sight but alleviates poverty and improves the life expectancy of its patients. Dr. Muki warns Australia is facing a looming catastrophe as the number of people with diabetes, the vast majority of who, who whom have preventable type 2 is set to double from 1.7 million. It is now the leading cause of blindness among working aged adults in this country, he told the AAP. It is a growing epidemic and it's the biggest threat to our health system. And I 100% agree with him. Non communicable diseases are the real issue here. Everyone's freaking out about this virus in China when many more people are catching these diseases which are going to have a much bigger impact on a much greater portion of civilizations in the world and the health industry than you could even realize. So here's, here's what he's suggesting. Dr. Muki has a multi-pronged approach to tackling the troubling problem, supporting a sugar tax on as part of a suite of measures to get Aussies to cut their intake of the sweet stuff. Taxing would hopefully encourage people to seek lower sugar alternatives particularly taxing sugar sweetened beverages which are a huge culprit in type 2 diabetes he said well here we go here we go i i'm not a fan of taxation in any form or punitive taxation but let's have a look if he's he's just drawing out sweetened beverages but i would like to draw everyone's attention to this data here and this is and i'll bring this up here this is from a video from low carb down under by dr david unwin and how he a british uh, general practitioner and how he was looking at just the issues with his patients all getting diabetes or getting health issues all getting the signs of you know alcoholic liver or liver disease now he developed these charts the nice sugar charts by Unwin and they are and these charts are explaining the sugar equivalent of the glycemic index so it helps predict how the fruits might affect blood glucose important information if you have type 2 diabetes and we see here a banana 
is the equivalent because he was just telling people oh it has a gi rating of this you shouldn't have it and they couldn't get it his patients couldn't understand it so we had to get it converted over to what is the equivalent of teaspoons of sugar so a banana is five the equivalent of eating 5.9 teaspoons of sugar so a mars bar has 8.5 teaspoons of sugar per small bar so a banana is better than a mars bar but not by much guys not by much with regards to sugar it's probably better because it doesn't have all the seed oils and garbage in the mars bars but then let's look at a healthy breakfast bran flakes 3.7 milk and this is this is without adding any to it look at apple juice would you feed your kid a mars bar for breakfast guys so their breakfast is 16.3 teaspoons of sugar before they drench the bran flakes in brown sugar or honey or put jam on the toast we can have a look here at the other culprits so he's talking about sugary beverages which is just going to be an added cost particularly in these remote communities that we have as well it's going to be even more of a cost because the state is managing getting services out there and they're doing a terrible job of it like, like um some of the islands as well you know grapes four apples watermelon neck greens apricots fresh strawberries so i mean our kids when my mother would bring a bunch of bananas, they would just go nuts. They would eat so much of them because it's just a sugar hit. So I said, well, bring something else. I'd rather you bring apples or bring pears or apricots even. Something which has less of an effect. So do you think they would start taxing this? Or how many people would stop going from the Coke to drinking the apple juice then? Because it's healthy. The problem with these taxation issues is that it is punitive it's not educational and coming from a professional ophthalmologist his training is in disease management and curing it's not in addressing the root causes and he's he's a you know he's applying a punitive approach to it which i can completely understand and appreciate but is it going to work i'd bet a carton it won't so he also wants governments to step in to regulate food labeling and advertising. Advertising space and time for sugar needs to be reduced, particularly in kids' TV. I think advertising sugar to kids' TV is terrible. Advertising campaigns to make people aware of the consequences of overconsumption of sugar and the effects of diabetes on sight are also crucial, he said. Well, yeah, I agree with that. In part, I think education is the key. The dangers of having a high carbohydrate diet, the dangers of people um, having insulin resistance on the body, the fact that type 2 diabetes can be treated through diet. People are getting off the insulin by just changing their diet. That needs to be put out there. But the problem is, the problem is most health professionals, most nutritionists will just blindly, blindly follow the health guidelines. Do not mistake someone following guidelines for knowledge. That's not knowledge and that's not expertise. That's just following a guideline. Most of us are addicted to sugar, probably unwillingly. unwittingly. Yes, he is right there 100%. 100%. Sugar is addictive as nicotine. It's a highly addictive substance, he says. People are going blind and losing vision. What we need to do is go right back to beginning and say what is causing this. He'd been tipped as the favorite to win the award and was nominated for the high honor alongside musician Archie Roach, Katrina Fanning, Dr. Jeffrey Thompson, Rachel Dowie, Dr. Jess Melbourne Thomas, and Annie uh, Fogarty. So there we have it. You know, congratulations to him for winning Australian of the Year. I can understand where he's coming from with his idea of taxation. I don't think it'll work. I think we need better education. You know, I, I think he needs to be, you know, himself. He should go to low carb down under. Look at some of the research that people are putting forward there where doctors are treating their patients. And there's one thing I want everyone to have a look at. This is a video I recommend or a documentary. The Magic Pill humans animals and planet you know food is medicine now at the beginning of this you can find it on youtube at the beginning of this movie they, they actually go to a north queensland indigenous community you can see here they've got subtitles for another language you can see diabetes diabetes they're talking about all the illnesses that they're suffering there and you can see the food that they're feeding their kids 
you know, it's Coke, it's Western, it's junk food. This is the worst thing that I think Western civilization has brought to this continent. It's the Western diet. And it's the Western diet of the last 50 years. What they did, they took the Aboriginal people, they took them out into, I think, for a two-week retreat, and they ate how they would have traditionally eaten. You know, fish, animals, witchetty grubs, more traditional tucker, bush tucker, traditional food for two weeks. What do you think happened to their insulin levels? What do you think happened to their blood glucose levels? Because a lot of them have diabetes. They're all insulin. They're monitoring themselves out there. What do you think just two weeks made a difference? So, I mean, congratulations to him for winning this award. I recommend everyone has a look at this. But I'm not confident that a sugar tax is the solution. I think it is much too punitive. And frankly, it just shows, I'd say, a surface level understanding of the dietary, um, well, the causes of the dietary issues here in Australia. Just taxing processed food is just going to put a cost of living burden on the poorest of the poor. It's not going to educate them. We need to educate people. People need to realize. They need to look at the sugar impacts of everything they're eating. They need to learn about the latest research where people are reversing their diabetes. People are cutting their weight by significant amounts. And our health guidelines, our dietary guidelines from the government, need to be scrapped and based on only real laboratory-based science. Because a lot of it is just this quasi-survey memory rubbish that isn't worth the paper it's printed on. Anyway, guys, happy Australia Day. Let me know what you all think. Do you think a sugar tax is the solution? You know, will it stop people who are addicted to something as strong as nicotine? Did it work on cigarettes? Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you're a fan of the channel and want to help support us, we have a Patreon where you can make a small monthly donation. You can also join the channel here on YouTube where you get access to um, emojis and badges. You can also use our affiliate links at Independent Reserve for your crypto trading and Amazon and eBay for your consumer purchases. Someone's stocking up their Blu-ray purchases, I've noticed. Very good. Good to see you bought the Predator. That's a good one. <laughs> Makes me want to get it, actually. Uh, but back on topic. We also have Pocket Squares available at Heiser Says. And we have PayPal if you want to contribute that way. Thank you, everyone. Have a great Australia Day. And I will talk to you later. Bye for now.